Today's topic of discussion is uh, diuretic. Uh, hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shrinaz Malik and we are going to discuss diuretic drug. Before we jump to diuretic drug, we should know about the physiology of urine formation and function of kidney. So, kidney is regulatory organ. Nephrons are functional unit of kidney. Glomerular site of ultrafiltration. Tubular system contain highly specialized cells that contain ion transport system and possess water permeability properties. Hormone controlled by antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone and kidney receive 25% of cardiac output at rest. Now functions of the kidneys are like uh, excretion of waste product from body, regulatory function like acid base, fluid and electrolyte balance and excretory function like nitrogenous substance are uh, waste product and they should excrete it and uh, hormones like production of angiotensin, prostacycline, erythropoietin and activation of vitamin D. Now mechanism of urine formation. Urine formation occur in three steps. Glomerular filtration is first step. Uh, in this process approximately 180 liter of fluid uh, filter through glomeruli and it contain blood soluble solute, protein and lipid. After filtration, 99% of fluid reabsorb through tubular reabsorption and 1 to 1 1.5 liter of urine formation occur in 24 hours. Now this 1.5 liter urine travel through tubular uh, renal tubule and uh, it contain sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, amino acid and glucose. So here is the diagram of nephron and uh, it contain various parts. So this part is called proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, this uh, part is a loop of hand layer. This is called descending loop of hand layer. This is a descending loop of hand layer and this one is the ascending loop of hand layer. Third part third part this one is called thick limb of loop of Henle uh, ascending thick limb of ascending loop of Henle this part is called distal convoluted tubule this is distal convoluted tubule and this is called collecting duct this is called collecting duct. So this part also called another by another name like uh, this part proximal convoluted tubule. It's also called as a site one. Uh, this second part is the thick limb of ascending loop of end layer is called site two. This is the early part of convoluted tubule is called site three and fourth one is collecting duct is also called a site 4. So here is the proximal convoluted tubule. It is also called a site 1 where sodium filter through glomerulus and enter into proximal tubule where it actively reabsorb from the proximal convoluted tubule and chloride passively reabsorb from this side. Now potassium, glucose and amino acid also reabsorb from the proximal convoluted tubule and proportionately water gets reabsorbed. So tubular fluid remain isotonic in proximal convoluted tubule. Now this is the descending loop of Henle. It is impermeable to sodium and urea so sodium and urea remain in the tube but it is highly permeable for water so water reabsorb from uh, descending loop of henle and sodium and urea remain in the descending loop of henle so fluid of the descending loop of henle will remain hypertonic now ascending loop of henle where it is impermeable for water and highly permeable to sodium and chloride uh, and it uh, sodium and chloride reabsorb through 
sodium potassium to chloride co-transporter pump so here is the sodium potassium to chloride co-transporter where sodium and chloride reabsorb through, through this pump calcium and magnesium also reabsorb from this site and so uh, water is impermeable so tubular fluid remain hypotonic this part is early distal convoluted tubule where water is impermeable but sodium and chloride is reabsorbed with the help of sodium chloride symporter. So, uh, the fluid remain hypotonic at this side. In distal part of uh, the convoluted tubule and collecting duct, uh, sodium actively reabsorb and chloride and water reabsorb passively exchange of sodium and hydrogen ion occur and sodium and potassium exchange under the influence of aldosterone and aldosterone promote reabsorption of water and depletion of the potassium so excretion of potassium will increase and reabsorption of water occur due to aldosterone in absence of aldosterone there will be uh, collecting duct this collecting duct is become impermeable to water and so large amount of diluted urine will excrete it now classification of diuretic highly efficacious diuretic medium efficacious diuretic and weak diuretic so first high efficacious diuretics are uh, loop diuretics drugs are furosemide bumetanide and trosemide these are highly efficacious drug and uh, second one is the medium efficacious diuretic or thiazide diuretic and drug is, is thiazide and chlorothiazide weak diuretics are carbonic and hydrase inhibitor drugs is acetazolamide Osmotic diuretic drug are uh, mannitol and glycerol. Third group is uh, potassium sparing diuretic drug is pyranolactone. Now site of action of loop diuretic is descending loop of thick uh, limb of descending loop of Henley. This is the site of action of loop diuretic. Now, loop diuretic, it also called as high ceiling diuretic. So, site of action is loop of Henle at the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. It inhibits sodium potassium to uh, chloride symport. So, ultimately, it in, uh, inhibit reabsorption of sodium chloride potassium, calcium, magnesium and hydrogen. Ultimately, increase the excretion of all the electrolyte uh, and result of hyponatremia, hypotension, dehydration, hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis can occur. If excess use continuous dose then electrolyte disturbance can occur. Effect of loop diuretic on the renal and extrarenal effects. So first is the extrarenal effect on intravenous infusion direct vascular effect can occur acute increased systemic venous capacitance causes vasodilatation occur shift blood from the central pulmonary to systemic vessel thereby decrease left ventricular filling pressure and rapid relief pulmonary edema now renal effect will be due to intravenous infusion acute change in renal and systemic hemodynamics increased prostaglandin synthesis in kidney and increased renal blood flow and gfr quick relief in left ventricular and pulmonary uh, left ventricular failure and pulmonary edema why loop diuretics are called high ceiling diuretics uh, high dose produce increase the dose of diuretic causes stronger diuretic effect than the lower doses so it is called high ceiling diuresis now therapeutic uses of loop diuretics are uh, like it is useful in edema irrespective of origin it may be uh, maybe due to nephrotic cardiac or renal cause it can be used uh, acute pulmonary edema intravenous infusion of the furosemide can be used in acute pulmonary edema 
to rapid increase in venous capacitance and brisk natriuresis reduces left ventricular filling pressure and thereby rapid relieving pulmonary edema it uh, can also used in hypertension only in presence of renal insufficiency or hypertensive crisis emergencies otherwise it is less useful than the thiazide because it increases uh, adverse drug reaction as well as increase frequency of dose now uh, other uses are like a congestive heart failure which decrease preload and circulatory volume by removal of peripheral edema and pulmonary congestion uh, treatment of hypercalcemia of malignancies a uh, medical emergencies rapid or large volume of normal saline with loop diuretic can cause increase the calcium excretion along with uh, blood transfusion to prevent volume overload Uh, now dose of the diuretics are 20 to 80 mg once a day in the morning plasma half life is 1 to 2 hour but it is prolonged in pulmonary edema renal and hepatic insufficiencies now adverse effect of loop diuretics are hypokalemia it is rare at low dose but with brisk diuresis or prolonged therapy uh, hypokalemia can occur diet if dietary intake is low then hypokalemia can occur manifestation uh, like uh, fatigue weakness muscle cramp cardiac arrhythmia is the serious complication management of the hypokalemia is uh, high dietary intake like banana supplement of potassium chloride uh, but it should not be combined with diuretic and potassium chloride together concurrent use of potassium sparing diuretic with loop diuretic is the best option now other adverse effect like uh, hyperuricemia it can occur minimal with low doses hypercalcemia magnesium depletion after prolonged therapy risk of ventricular arrhythmia and especially with uh, myocardial infarction or congestive heart failure patient treated with digitalis acute saline depletion with high sealing agent due to vigorous therapy vigorous diuresis uh, dilutional hypernatremia in chf patient metabolic hyperglycemia and hyperlipidemia can occur general adverse effect like uh, nausea vomiting diarrhea cns adverse effect like headache giddiness paresthesia and uh, agent specific adverse drug reaction like ototoxicity and it should be avoided in uh, toxemia of pregnancy and cirrhotic patient now second group is medium efficacious group and uh, drugs are thiazide diuretic like hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothiazide thiazide related diuretics are chlorothalidone and indapamide these are medium efficacious diuretic site of action of thiazide diuretic is distal convoluted tubule so mechanism of action of thiazide is at on, uh, on the sodium chloride symporter which block by thiazide so increase excretion of sodium and chloride and increase delivery of the sodium and which exchange with potassium so sodium is uh, reabsorbed and potassium is excreted in the uh, lumen so ultimately it increase sodium potassium and magnesium excretion and decrease calcium excretion so ultimately uh, hypokalemia hypercalcemia hypomagnesium can occur change intrarenal hemodynamic may reduce gfr and further Uh, not effective in uh, very low gfr less than 30 ml per minute now differences between furosemide and thiazide furosemide act at the site 2 uh, and it blocks sodium potassium 2 chloride symporter when uh, thiazide act at the site 3 and it uh, blocks sodium chloride symporter and uh, renal action are almost similar in both of drug except increase ex uh, calcium excretion in furosemide and decrease calcium excretion due to thiazide otherwise all electrolyte like sodium potassium magnesium chloride are excreted in both the drug and hydrogen excretion urate also excreted in both the drug and uh, decrease corticomedullary gradient and free water clearance in furosemide uh, 
and now extrarenal effect uh, due to furosemide it uh, direct vascular effect due to intravascular infusion uh, acutely increase systemic venous capacitance and thereby decrease left ventricular filling pressure and rapid relief pulmonary edema due to furosemide when uh, intrarenal which may reduce gfr further not effective in very low gfr less than 30 ml per minute due to thiazide and extra renal effect like persistent sodium deficiency reduce pressure response of catecholamine and angiotensin 2 fall in blood pressure and it act as an anti hypertensive drug uh, now other effects like hyperglycemia increase low density lipoprotein and triglyceride level Uh, autotox are similar in the both the drug autotoxicity and allergic reaction occur due to furosemide uses of furosemide are like uh, it is useful in all type of the edema like hepatic cirrhosis congestive heart failure edema associated with renal diseases ascites due to malignancy lymphedema hepatic uh, idiopathic edema and hypertensive crisis or hypertensive emergencies it can be used acute left ventricular failure and pulmonary edema uh, in all this condition furosemide can be used it also useful along with uh, blood transfusion to reduce fluid overload now uses of thiazide thiazide can be used uh, as anti hypertensive drug also useful in uh, edema to reduce edema in like uh, cardiac hepatic and renal edema Uh, it is useful in diabetes insipidus and uh, uh, hyper uh, calciuria and renal calcium stone all the adverse effect are similar in both the drug except hypocalcemia occur due to furosemide and hypercalcemia occur due to thiazide other uh, adverse effect like electrolyte uh, disturbance uh, like uh, hypokalemia hypomagnesemia hyperuricemia and acute saline depletion and dil uh, dilutional hyponatremia occur in uh, due to both the drug metabolic effect are similar with both the drug but hyperglycemia is more with thiazide diuretic otherwise uh, hyperlipidemia hyperuricemia and hyperglycemia can seen with the both the drug other effect like a reversible hearing loss with furosemide and other effect like allergic reaction and aggravated renal insufficiency and importance should um, seen with the thiazide and it should be avoided in young male to avoid importance so plasma half life of furosemide is 1 to 2 hour when uh, thiazide um, half life is 6 to 12 hour both the drug are contraindicated during pregnancy now weak diuretic like um, uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor it is not commonly used due to its weak action and uh, it inhibit carbonic anhydrase and uh, non competitively and reversibly so that convert uh, water and carbon dioxide into bicarbonate and bake a reaction to the lumen so carbonic anhydrase enzyme is required to formation of Uh, carbonic acid and uh, again this carbonic acid in presence of carbonic and hydrogen enzyme split uh, in diffuse into hydrogen and bicarbonate now hydrogen is exchanged with sodium so carbonic and hydrogen uh, inhibitor inhibit this reaction and increase the excretion of the sodium water and bicarbonate and it at the distal convoluted tubule it also increase the excretion of the potassium so ultimately it uh, increase the excretion of sodium potassium bicarbonate and water so extra renal action is decrease intraocular tension decrease gastric acid secretion decrease pancreatic bicarbonate sodium bicarbonate and raise level of carbon dioxide in the brain and raise seizure threshold now uses of carbonic anhydrase uh, inhibitors it can be used in glaucoma to reduce aqueous humor formation nausea and vomiting associated with acute mountain sickness epilepsy adjuvant therapy to retard abnormal excessive discharge of cns neuron 
reversal of metabolic alkalosis and alkalizing urine for to alkalizing urine for urinary tract infection and promote excretion of acidic drug adverse effect are like metabolic acidosis due to loss of bicarbonate hypokalemia loss of potassium at the collecting duct fatigue abdominal discomfort hypersensitivity reaction and rare condition is the bone marrow depression and it is contraindicated in liver disease now potassium sparing diuretics are aldosterone antagonist drug is pyranolactone and direct inhibitor of renal epithelial sodium channel drugs are amyloride and triamterene physiologically aldosterone enter into the cell and bind with the mineralocorticoid receptor and form the hormone receptor complex now this hormone receptor complex enter into the nucleus and form the specific type of the protein now this protein act on the sodium and potassium which increase excretion of potassium and uh, reabsorption of the sodium now spironolactone is the aldosterone inhibitor so it bind with the mineralocorticoid receptor and form the uh, drug mineralocorticoid complex now this complex is enter into the nucleus and inhibit the formation of the that specific type of protein so it uh, increase the excretion of sodium and uh, reabsorption of the potassium so increase the potassium level in the body so it can be combined with uh, potassium depleting diuretic like furosemide and thiazide to increase efficacy of the drug now adverse effect of the aldosterone antagonist hyperkalemia occur uh, like estrogen like effect like uh, menstrual disturbances gynecomastia and decrease libido in the male patient and uh, abdominal upset and drowsiness occur pharmacokinetic of uh, uh, spironolactone it can be given orally microfine powder tablets are available bioavailability is 75% and metabolized by liver converted into active metabolites like canrinone and potassium canrinone is uh, water soluble and can be given intravenously and gets converted into canrinone onset of action is low because they are steroid receptor drug so it takes time for action therapeutic uses of spironolactone are uh, it can be used in edema like congestive heart failure cirrhotic edema and nephrotic syndrome it breaks resistance to thiazides or furosemide in refractory edema counteract potassium loss due to thiazide and furosemide so it can be combined with both is drug and in hypertension it can be combined with thiazide or furosemide aplerinone is newer drug approved for hypertension and no gynecomastia occur due to this drug congestive heart failure as an adjuvant therapy it retard disease progression and reduce mortality resistant hypertension due to primary hyperaldosteronism in this condition spironolactone can be used now primeterine and amyloride this both drug are directly directly acting potassium sparing diuretic they direct inhibit sodium channel in luminal membrane of cell at the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct so sodium excretion and potassium retention occur so valuable in combination with potassium depleting agent especially in uh, and is uh, in anti hypertensive therapy so uses are it can be used in uh, hypertension in combination therapy with thiazide and loop diuretic and amyloride useful for the treatment of lithium induced nephrogenic diabetes insipidus as well as aerosol in aerosol form to improve mucociliary clearance in cystic fibrosis now adverse effect of um, potassium sparing diuretic uh, are hyperkalemia and photosensitivity now osmotic diuretics drugs used are mannitol glycerol and isosorbate 
ideal properties of uh, osmotic diuretics are well absorbed not metabolized freely filter at the glomeruli not reabsorb it is inert substance and cheap osmotic diuretics are inert pharmacologically and they are not act through receptor or target site they are freely filtered through the glomerulus and increase osmolar osmolarity of the tubular fluid hinder water reabsorption in proximal tubule descending loop of henle and collecting duct diluted urine uh, diuresis with mild natriuresis can occur and expand extracellular fluid volume increase renal blood flow and gfr never used for the chronic edema or as an natriuretic uh, mannitol is pharmacologically inert substance uh, it is uh, freely filtered from the glomerulus and administered intravenously it is neither metabolized nor uh, reabsorbed from the renal tubule Osmotic diuretics are useful in acute renal failure and treatment as well as prevention uh, to maintain uh, GFR during major surgeries, trauma cases, and a hemolytic reaction. It lowers the intracranial tension and it is useful during before the brain surgery and cerebral edema. It also reduces the intraocular tension, so it is useful in acute glaucoma and before intraocular surgeries. it uh, also useful uh, in forced diuresis in drug poisoning and to counteract low plasma osmolality after dialysis adverse drug reaction due to osmotic diuresis are uh, acute intravascular volume expansion can occur before diuresis starts it exert an osmotic effect on the blood contraindicated in pulmonary edema cardiac edema and intracranial hemorrhage and established renal failure thrombophlebitis can occur headache may be due to hyponatremia and nausea can occur if odor uh, is there dehydration and hypernatremia can occur now drug interaction furosemide or thiazide with digoxin this diuretic causes hypokalemia which increase the binding of digoxin to sodium potassium adipase leading to digoxin toxicity and cardiac arrhythmia can occur high ceiling diuretic with amino glycoside both the drug causes ototoxicity and cause enhanced toxicity together furosemide with non steroidal anti inflammatory drug and said can cause retention of sodium and water and diminish anti hypertensive effect of the loop diuretic or thiazide furosemide and th or thiazide with lithium diuretic causes hyponatremia resulting in compensatory increase in reabsorption of sodium and lithium in proximal convoluted tubule leading to lithium toxicity can occur furosemide or chlorothalidone with amyloride Furosemide or chlorothalidone causes hypokalemia, whereas amyloride conserves potassium. So this combination uh, does not alter potassium plasma potassium level and also improve diuretic response uh, as a synergistic drug. Now summary of all diuretics. First is the cetazolamide. It acts on the proximal convoluted tubule, and mechanism of action is uh, it um, inhibit uh, carbonic anhydrase enzyme, and efficacy is low. Next is the loop diuretic drug is furosemide. It acts on the thick ascending loop of Henle, and it inhibit sodium potassium to chloride co-transporter, and efficacy is high. Thiazide is act at the early distal tubule. and it inhibits sodium chloride symporter and efficacy is medium potassium sparing diuretic like spironolactone and amyloride it act on the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct and uh, mechanism of action is the aldosterone antagonist as well as directly acting on the sodium channel and efficacy is low Mannitol. It is the loop. It acts on the loop of Henle as well as proximal convoluted tubule, and it is osmotic diuretic. And effect is osmotic effect, and efficacy is high. Thank you for watching the video.